Okay, so I'm currently opening InDesign and I'm going to um, show you a brief preview on how to actually bring in photos as um, you're actually creating like some sort of magazine article. Um, if I was creating an article about myself or an artist or whatever, um, how to go about maybe like a four page layout. And um, we'll discuss that as soon as this opens. I, I was opening it, just open the plugin or something. We don't know what I open here. So Adobe InDesign 2019, I have Creative Cloud. And it's opening. I thought it was opening, but apparently it was not. So you see I have a bunch of pictures laid out on my desktop right now that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna walk you through, uh, you know, maybe what you would end up using in design for. Hopefully you do a lot of your text in InDesign, and I understand if you do some of it in Illustrator, but I wouldn't be doing the majority of that in Photoshop because you're going to get cleaner text in InDesign and uh, Illustrator. It's taking a second to open, so... Hopefully from there I can even show you, um, you know, how to apply page numbers, and like maybe a master page or something like that. But uh, if you're doing four pages, that doesn't matter. All right, so it's going. All right, so I'm gonna hit create new. We're gonna hit, uh, let's see, it says inches, eight and a half by 11 page. We do face and pages. Let's do uh, four, we're gonna do four pages. And again, it doesn't matter if you actually write the number four here because you can just create as many pages as you want and delete them as you go along. But I know I want at least four columns. I'm not really sure yet because I'm not going to do columns like that because the columns I don't want put in now. I want a different amount of columns on every page maybe. And the same thing in the margins and stuff. So um, I could hit create. I'm going to file save as. I'm going to save it to my desktop as... Um, Demo Artist Magazine or something like that. Demo Art Mag Desktop. Save it. All right. Now on this page, I have a bunch of nonsense here, huh? All right. So <laughs> on this page, I may want to put a heading and uh, an image. And so maybe for the image, I, I know I want a piece of art, but I'm not really sure what yet. So I'm going to definitely click uh, this for now. And this is going to be a placeholder for any of my images. So I'm gonna um, select down here. I'm gonna leave the heading room like maybe that high up. I have the rulers open. If you can't find the rulers, you just hit Command R or Control R and Command R or Control R to bring them back. Or I believe they're under View. So right here, Hide Rulers, and then you would say Show Rulers that they weren't showing. All right, so I'm gonna drag this box. And you could change the size of the box later on. Does it not that important? But I mean, it's a placeholder, so I want an idea of uh, what it is that I'm looking for here for an image. So I'm gonna put something like that big. I'm going to start my text down here. Maybe I even do like a drop cap or something. I don't know. And as for my text, I'm going to select my text tool, type tool. I'm going to um, put bar right here. And if I, I know what I want it to be, I can select that information now. So if I want it to be like, we'll say 24. And, um, well, I mean, it's not a bad thing. So I'll just leave the text the way it is, but you can sample whatever text you want. You can do impact just for the heck of it, just let's see. All right, so I'm just going to um, write, no, let's do a, a different title. Artwork on, Oh, um, I'm looking at this. It's kind of cluttered, crowded. So maybe what I want to do is I want to drop this down. So artwork on view. How do I want my audience to read this? Do I want them to pause at artwork on view or artwork on view at? So I would probably go with artwork on view at. And the reason why I would do that is because I'd want to um, 
lead my um, reader into wanting to know at what, you know. So I'm going to drop down Unknown by Jill Saluka, and I'm going to select that. And being that's a headline, what I'm going to do is, let's see if we could find this real quick. Uh, let me go to help real quick. Um, oh, shoot. Am I doing the wrong one? Help. So I want to uh, change my font. Let's see. Captions, no. We'll do uppercase. See, now the good thing is if you know what stuff is called, then you can research it real quick in a search window. And when you click on it, it will actually give you drop down windows and show you the exact location of where it's at. So if I go to um, upper, I'm typing in uppercase. So I said change to uppercase. Now I can find that. Now what it's doing is it automatically, here, I'll go back up. So I go back to help and I hit change up case. It pops up the window and tells me exactly where that's located so I could do it. I want to change all my stuff to upper case for my headline. So I'm going to go to type and then I'm going to go down to this area right here and type. So I'm going to make sure I highlight all this. I'm going to go to type. Change case. And I'm going to hit upper case or I could do title case. Oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> type change case. Let's try that again title case or we could go to type change case and hit uppercase now I kind of like the title case better so I'm gonna go to type change case title case and I'm gonna make this much larger so I'm gonna change the, the size of my work to be like it's really big but it's gonna work we're gonna do 40 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, end up dropping this down a little bit just give me a second here I'm gonna move this over though there's going to be artwork on view at a known, which is a, a name of a place. So at, we're going to hit the, the, we're going to talk the, the, artwork on view at the unknown by Jill Saluka, right? So I'm going to, you know, select the, eh, maybe line up to work. Maybe that's a good one. If I've hit return my keyboard, it goes too far down. So it's not what I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to try to drop this down a little bit. So see how it's blinking and I click over here, it dropped down, nothing happens. But if it's clicking and I highlight that. And you see how this scoots in? Maybe I don't want to scoot in. Maybe I want the other way around. I could want the whole line to shift down even. That, you know, it's up to me. I could do negatives. Oh, I could do negative down here. If I highlight it, that's a baseline shift. So I'm shifting the whole baseline on both of them. So this way they're equal. Go back up. All right. Now I'm going to constantly save this. I might we want to scoot this over a little bit more as a possibility. Um, I'll decide that later. You know, it'd be good. Artwork on view at the Unknown by Jill Saluka. Maybe I should do by artist Jill Saluka. Um, and that's you know optional really. Um, I'm not the writer. I'm just the person putting together the you know the design. And that's what you'd be doing. So I, w I know I want a picture there, and I, I'm gonna want two columns down here. So I'm trying to do the spacing now. So I'm gonna choose this text tool, and I'm gonna click and draw. Unlike in uh, we went over this already, I think. Unlike in Photoshop and Illustrator, you can just click down and type. But in InDesign, you can't. You actually have to make a box. So I click down, type, nothing happens. So I actually click down to make a box. You can see my transform palette. I say I knew I wanted a four inch box. I could just type that into my transform palette, which is over here. If you can't find transform, you can always type in the help words transform, and then it will tell you much easier. All right, so if I go to transform, click on that, see, it tells me it's under object. That was wrong. So um, I always forget because, you know, it's, uh, well, you know, too many programs start forgetting where everything's at. So under object and transform, this is why it's important to know what things are called. Eventually you learn the ling language and you're able to look it up, especially when they update versions. Sometimes they move things around um, based on uh, 
what their reviews were of different tools and sometimes they improve tools. There's been times where there's been tools in the toolbox over here and now they no longer exist there or they exist there partially and there's a whole new palette menu that pops up for them that they never used to. So over time you just have to adjust with every program and just know what things are called. You start learning the language. All right, so um, object and transform if I wanted the transform palette to pop up. Now I can actually, I know this uh, palette down here is if I click it, it's uh, highlighted right here. If I click on it, you'll see these boxes. That means it's highlighted. And it tells me it's 7.5 inches by 4.18. Maybe I just want to make it four. Let's make it even. Yeah. And then I'm going to drop it down a little bit more. Or maybe I could leave it there. I don't know. We'll see how it looks when we're done typing. All right. So now make sure it's highlighted. You know, it's selected because the boxes are up and it's got an O down there. And the O um, has type options. I click on that. Open properties are not applicable because, well, we didn't type anything yet. So anyway, um, I'm going to go to type and hit, uh, you have options for character, which is already opened. You'll see that it opened on mine. Yours may not be open. Whatever is checkmarked is actually opened. Go to text frame options, I believe. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, text frame options. I know I want uh, two columns here, so I'm going to hit preview. And I'm going to hit uh, columns two. And I want two just like that. I can make this um, gutter in between bigger, smaller. I'm going to go bigger. We're going to put it at five. Ooh, go back five. Just half inch. All right, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, say I was in Microsoft Word and I had my article typed out or um, the writer already sent me information. I could just copy and paste it. And I could paste it right in here. So I could actually hit click Word, um, hit copy, which would, um, you know, with any of your copy tools, or go to edit and copy and then come into this program and hit edit and paste. But I don't have anything written up. So I'm just going to put um, placeholder text in it for now. I'm going to control click it. And I'm going to click, uh, where's it at? Font, text frame options which is right click text frame options also. So I actually don't have to find it up there. There's multiple ways to usually locate just about anything in this program. I'm just right clicking and there's my text frame options come right up to also. And you can also do spell check, which is very important. You should always check your spelling. All right, um, I'm gonna hit uh, not insert special character, insert break, nope, fill placeholder text. And I did that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create paragraphs and um, you know, maybe I want indentations, maybe I want um, drop cap. So basically I'm going to select all this. It's, let's see what size this is. Um, it's 12 minion, which is fine. I'm working with the same font. So I'm going to zoom in with my magnifying glass. Or I can uh, you know, zoom in like this. I'm just clicking. We're pretending these are real words, okay? So I'm going to just select just the letter I. And uh, I'm going to change that. If I go over here to drop caps, I go here to help. I hit drop cap. So how would you do that? Drag and drop item? No. Um, I would actually... Uh, hmm. I could do it this way. I thought it would come up, but it's not. After it gets too big, it comes like a drop cap letter. Um, I'm manipulating it more than it could be. They have like some sort of default here. I just have to find it. Um, but typography and essentials for now. Um, we could also do a book, but we're not doing that yet. So. Um, if I wanted to go back and uh, put a page number, see right now I have that little red box we've been talking about um, in the last uh, time. You guys know that that means there's overflow text somewhere. Um, all right, so if I have a paragraph menu here, under paragraph, you have the option for drop cap in paragraph also. Oh, say if uh, this is a new paragraph, I don't know, over here, I'll just say. This is another one we want to make a drop cap there. I go to paragraphs, 
and I can select it here, where um, this is the true drop cap. Okay, and this one's got one, which means there's only one, sp they see the spacing between here and here. So now if I do like two or three, it does uh, two or three letters. So you could drop a whole letter, I mean a whole word, not letter. So I can actually um, select, you know, back down to normal, you know. So those are the paragraphs. And I'm going to zoom out. And we still have all this down here. So I know I want a couple pictures here. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to put uh, some paragraphs and stuff here. I don't want the, there's no master page on this because I want all my pages to be, you know, subtly different. Unless I know that I want um, a picture on the same spot on every page or my text in the same spot on every page, then I'm not going to create a master page um, to work from. I mean, you could create master pages if I go to pages here. And up here it's got a master page and then um, you have none. So, you know what, maybe I'll just create one just so you guys can see what happens. So I'm going to hit new master page. I'm going to make sure I'm working on that um, new master page. I'm going to go to page two. And I'm going to tell page two um, that's going to be my new master page. So I'm going to put an image here. I know I want an image there. And then I want text everywhere else. So I'm going to put text here. I'm going to want text there. And of course, I would measure this all out to make sure it looks more even than this because right now it looks terrible. So I'm going to drag a ruler from over here, click and drag. Uh, wrong page. Oops. Click and drag. Ruler. I want to make sure that these are the same. Otherwise, it's going to look bad once I start typing. Okay. So I know I want all these pages to look like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. I'm hitting the alt option zooming out, right? So I take a look at it. This is page two. And what I could do is I could click down here and I could hit new page, but that's not what I want. I want it to be a new master page, right? So um, I'm going to double click here. And this is A, 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 and A, right? And all these are A's, but there's nothing on A. So what I'm going to want to do is put something on A. So I'm going to select all this. I'm going to go to Edit and Copy. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit uh, not Insert Page, Move Page, Duplicate Spread, Print Spread, New Master. I'm going to hit B. Okay. And I'm going to hit OK. It says number of pages, two. I'm going to hit just one. I'm going to hit OK. And... Uh, I'm going to want to edit this. He's by itself right now. And notice that none of these are highlighted blue. Just this guy is. I'm going to go to edit and paste. All right. So now I want page um, two. There's nothing there. But page three, I'm going to want to change page three to a B. So I'm going to drag this down. And you can see that now changed. Now, like, how do you edit that? Because I, I want to put pictures there and stuff, and now I can't edit it. So I can only edit it if it's a B master page. So say if I had like a logo or something and I wanted it on every single page, I could clearly put it on B master page and it will show up on every single page. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do that same thing. I want to click and drag here. No, oh, oops. It helps if you are on the blue. Sorry, I'm going to click and drag here to page four. So now on page four, you see the same dotted outlines. Um, how do you edit that, right? So I know I want the same picture here that on every single page for whatever reason. It could be a title bar. It could be an intro picture, whatever it is. So I'm going to go back to my master page by double-clicking the blue area. And I'm going to click on this. And um, I have an option to, uh, I right-clicked it. It says allow master items override. So if I click that, right, and I go back to page uh, four. You'll see that I can override. See, there's nothing there. Go back to B. And I right click and I hit allow master item override. Should be back, I hope. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so I was got nervous there. All right, so I'm going to go back to B. I'm going to right click that again and um, I can do uh, hyperlinks. 
um, QR codes, stuff like that in copy. I'm going to paste an image. So I'm going to click uh, go to place. So I go up to um, edit. Oh, where's place? File. Place. Place. I'm going to go up to this image here. I hit open. I'm going to place this image and move it around. Oh, oops. Edit undo. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to hit fitting. Uh, fill frame proportionately. And so once I do that, I go down to page three. It's there. It's on every single page in the same exact spot. And it's less work for me. So if you're creating like a textbook or something like that, where the image is the same, where the text is the same on every single page in the same exact spot, or you have multiple master pages. You don't have to have just two. You can have four, five, six. And like, you know, if you have um, a title page um, for each chapter, that's a little bit different. You're gonna wanna use that, like with a purple bar or something like that. Um, and I'll show you better examples of that later on. But for this video, I'm just showing you the idea of what master pages can do for you. Um, you can also um, do page numbers. All right, so we're gonna go back. So we did the drop caps in the paragraphs, right? So um, we can also do page numbers. So if you go to type, insert special character, markers, should be page numbers. I will do it on the master page. Let's see what we do. With a, um, where's that type? Insert special characters, markers. Um, current page number. So right now it's current page number B. Now if I go to page two, let me zoom out. There's nothing. If I go to this page, it tells me it's page three, and this one tells me it's page four. How cool is that? So it already automatically did it for me. Now, if I want, this one is um, master page A. It's listed under. See the A over here? And that's A. So A, maybe we want the same thing. We'll go to master page A. Put a little text box over here. And we'll say that's where we want our page number to be. And we'll go up to type. Enter special character. No, is that it? Markers? Uh, wrong one. Uh, current page number. And you'll see a little letter A there. We're going to move that guy over. And you're going to want it to be consistent, so make sure you're doing it the same font and everything as your page B. So now if I go to page 1, there should be a page number, but it's not because it's first page, right? If I go to page 2, number 2 is there, see? If I go to page 4, it won't, won't be. It's going to be on the inside because I told it to be like the other page. I told it to be like page B. But if I go to page A, there's nothing there. And the reason is because master A is a spread. So the right pages on master A, if I go back up to the top, does not have a page number on it. If I were to switch these two, page A and page B, which you can do by clicking and dragging, page A should now have a number. See, now it's got a number. And page five should still have a number. See? I know it's a little confusing, but try it out and play around with it. So it's under, um, what the heck is it? Type, insert special characters, and um, it was uh, markers and current page number. And that was in the master pages. All right. Um, that's it for uh, today. And then we'll start putting together a real um, magazine layout of some sort. All right.